Well, hey guys, welcome back to the bench. I'm going to continue on with the investigation of these little Class D stereo chip amp boards, thermal dissipation issues. In the last video, we looked at the Yamaha YDA148 based board. But in this video, I'm going to look at this TPA3110 board. And we're going to see how adding heat sinks help to cool it off. The main reason for using this board over this one is because there's really no room to put a larger heat sink on it. I guess I could put the heat sink on the bottom, but you know, it does present mounting issues. Normally you want to mount the board inside a case or something, so it'll be better to put it on top. Now here's a diagram. This is the chip side view has the little pins that come out and are soldered to the PC board and there's these through holes which bring heat down to the copper foil area on the board and you can see here this array of holes once the camera focuses there's a whole bunch of these little plated through holes some underneath the chip and that brings heat to this copper foil area on the back of the board. That helps get rid of some of the heat, but when the amp is really pushing out a lot of watts, it's going to dissipate quite a bit of heat. And, you know, copper is a good conductor, but the thin foil can only do so much. So what I'm going to do is connect some 4 ohm loads, set up a fixed supply voltage, and we'll put our test tone in and we'll set it to the maximum output power before clipping of both channels. And I'll take the temperature without any additional heat sink. And I'll add this heat sink and get a temperature and we'll even try a larger one. Will we be able to get enough heat through the epoxy encapsulant? I think we'll be okay. You know, that's really thin and decent amount of area. The chip's fairly large inside there being a power amplifier circuit. And they do use fully encapsulated epoxy casing on some isolated type packages that dissipate quite a bit of heat. So I think we're okay there. To mount the heat sinks, I'm going to use this 3M thermal transfer tape, number 8810. This roll is fairly expensive. It's like $30. It's meant for this purpose, including mounting LEDs to heat sinks. You know, I can mount probably over 300 LEDs. So, you know, I, I get my money's worth. So without further ado, I'll get the amplifier all hooked up and get our first measurement without adding any heat sink. That'll be our baseline measurement. Okay, everything's hooked up. I'm using 4 ohm loads. Playing around, I, I figure 10 volts would be good. I was getting really hot when I went higher with 4 ohm loads. I didn't want to overstress it. And I took my meter here with the thermal probe. And get that in the shot here. Put a little heat sink grease and just put the probe on the back. And I press the hold function here, 214 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll list the Celsius temperatures at the end of the video. So now I'll attach the heat sink and see how that affects the temperature. Okay, well, with this little heat sink on there, did a little better, 209. I thought it would do a lot better than that. But that is a very small heat sink. For every watt of dissipation, there's going to be a fairly large delta T with this heat sink. It's going to heat up quite a bit. Well, let's see what the larger heat sink will do. Okay, with the larger heat sink installed, did a little better, 199. But still, that's I thought it'd do better than that. But you have to keep in mind that, you know, this is a still a thumb-sized heat sink. Not much 
bigger than a thumb. And it is really meant for having airflow over it. So I have this little cheapo little uh, dollar store fan. Runs on two AA batteries. It circulates about as much air as a little computer fan. So I'm going to set it off to the side and see how that helps. I think it'll help a lot with the fine pitched fins they use on the heat sink. So let's see how that works. Well that made quite a difference. Brought it down to 180. So I have the little fan sitting at this distance. And I had the board turned up like this so I can probe the bottom. And having the air blow across that heat sink really helped cool it off. Overall, I'm going to say this amplifier is really not meant for 4 ohm loads. Even with the heat sinking on it, it runs pretty darn hot. Yeah, even this larger heat sink is still pretty small. You, you need a really large heat sink that covers the board. This thing is probably only good for 2 or 3 watts. With a fan blowing over it, it might buy a a few extra watts but still to cool this amp down you need a larger heat sink well that's a wrap on this experiment I thought the results were pretty interesting that's it thanks for watching